Welcome to episode one of the Broadway Hat Podcast, where each episode we sit down with current and former players and talk all things hockey and especially the New York Rangers. I'm your host, Kyle Hall, and this week we sat down with former Ranger Vince Pedri. Vince played three seasons in the Rangers organization and has now started his own sports agency, NXT Sports Group. Now, let's send to our interview with Vince. So today we are joined by Vince Pedri, former Ranger, um, and actually now he's now started his own sports marketing company, Next Sports Group. Uh, congratulations on that transition. Thank you. Thank you. Um, kind of want to jump into one thing. So you were born in Minnesota. I was actually born. So I was born in Chicago and I grew up here. Okay. Um, and then my family started moving around a lot, but we had bought a house in Minnesota. Um so it's just kind of always a place I'd throw down as my home address. So it just one thing led to another and it just people thought I was from there. But uh, I lived there for a while. I lived there for four or five years probably combined. So it is somewhat home. And your dad was a college hockey coach, right, for quite a while. Yeah, he coached for about 15 years, um, was uh, at Fair State uh, University of Michigan, and then uh, University of Illinois Chicago used to have a Division One program, um, so he was the head coach there, and then got into youth hockey. Ferris State's always a college where you like, okay, where is Ferris yeah. State? And every year, they're actually ranked, or like you like watch the Final Four, and it's like Ferris State State. You're like, what the heck is Ferris State doing? Yeah, it's uh, it's in the middle of Michigan, but it's definitely uh, a hockey school, and um, yeah, they always seem to have a pretty good program, uh, you know, despite uh, kind of logistics being in a tough spot. And so you played. So you played some youth hockey and obviously all youth hockey in Chicago, yeah. but then you moved over to Minnesota for high school. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, so Minnesota high school is like compared to what, like Texas, uh, like Texas high school football. Yeah. It's uh, sort Minnesota of hockey. Yeah. It's insane. So like, I grew up playing in Chicago and just played kind of like youth triple A hockey around here. Um, and my mom was from Minnesota. So she kind of knew, um, you know, what the landscape was like. And obviously my dad, Coaching college, he was familiar with recruiting out of Minnesota. Um, so kind of just one summer, we started bouncing ideas off of each other and decided to give it a shot. Um, and it worked out for the best. I just found a uh, pretty random public school called Apple Valley um, and uh, fortunately walked into a pretty good team. Um, you know, in my first year, we actually made it to the state tournament, which was um you know, looking back, I don't know if I appreciate it as much, but I definitely do now because, um, you know, it was like a Thursday afternoon. You're playing in front of 17,000 people at the Excel Center. So that was a really cool experience. I was going to say, that's all the Excel Center, right? Like every game is done there? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, starting right from the quarterfinals, every game's there. And, um, you know, it's, just, it's like a, it's a day-long event. People show up early in the morning, stay all day. And, um, you know, the turnout that they get and the attendance that they get is, is unbelievable for, you know, high school sports. Yeah, I would say anything that's covered by like ESPN or NHL Network for a high school hockey game is pretty cool. I know they have the uh, what the all flow team yeah. for the Minnesota kids. You know, when they come out there. Yeah, so I think that's so, uh, quite the coverage. Yeah, that started uh, I think maybe a year or two after I left Minnesota. So I was a little disappointed that it didn't happen a little bit earlier. <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it anyway. <laughs> um, all right, so from there, so another thing, uh, USHL. Yeah. Um, so you. You uh you left um high, after high school you played some U.S. I guess is that the summer mostly you would play that or no so that yeah, um, all year that? um so I left Minnesota after my junior year of high school and went to the USHL um so that's I mean that's a full I mean we played sixty games so that's from you know starting in September um you know all the way to April and May depending on how far you go um but yeah I was I was in the USHL for for four years and moved away from home and. Stayed with uh, billet families who, you know, were, were unbelievable people, just very supportive and, uh, you know, kind of accommodating us and, you know, making sure we have everything we need. So it's basically the U.S. equivalent to like the OHL or like the Canadian Junior Leagues up north. Yeah, correct. Except uh, you, don't, you don't lose your college eligibility um, playing the USA. Okay. Yeah, I thought about college eligibility. So then you went into Penn State. Uh, I'm a big Penn State football fan. Um, so I know I follow follow Penn State hockey, you know, I think you guys were actually, was it your last year that you guys were number one in the country was the first time? Yeah, yeah, my uh, my last year there was my sophomore year, and um, 
for the first time in program history, we had a number one ranking. So it was, that was really exciting. Um, I think, but the next game after we were ranked number one, I think we lost a game that we probably shouldn't have. So it was kind of a <laughs> little bit of an awakening. You hit number one. <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, when you watch some of those uh, Penn State games, you know, we get the Big Ten networks. I do follow, first off, the helmets, you know, being the same as the football helmets. Yeah. I think that's like the coolest. It's a great look. Obviously, Michigan's got a cool look, too. They keep the football helmet theme as well. But the Penn State hockey helmets are pretty solid, uh, pretty solid lid. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's not of a, a piece of equipment that, you know, we didn't get there. So, I mean, we had – everything had the tool that we needed. And, um, you know, obviously the, the success they have had in, you know, a short number of years speaks for itself. And I think that's because they do such a good job, um, you know, supporting the student athletes there. So while you're there, you were first team, all Big Ten, obviously that – uh, garnered some attention from the NHL. Yeah. Um, also, you played with, and I funny enough, I listened to him speak last year on his book tour, um, Eddie Olchek's song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I played with uh, Tommy. Um, he was a senior when I was a freshman. Um, and I knew him a little bit because we were both uh, kind of from Chicago, um, but we never really had, you know, gotten to uh, to sit down, I guess, with each other because he's – He's about four or five years older than me, but uh, he's back in Chicago now. And, um, you know, we talk semi-regularly and stay in touch. But, yeah, he's uh, he's awesome. He uh, played a kind of a big part of me um, getting comfortable there. Did Ed have any uh, tips or anything for you when you joined the Rangers? Did he? Uh... Uh, not a did he, did he, You know? Um, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure if he, you know, wanted to overstep or anything, but I, I would have taken any piece of advice I would have gotten from him. Um, so then from there, uh, what is the exact process for like a UD, uh, undrafted free agent? Yeah. So it's like an all year process. Do you like have an, a consult or an advisor that kind of speaks to teams on your behalf, like kind of behind closed doors, like, Hey, he's thinking about coming out after this year or, um, like how does that kind of go down? It's, it's a, it's a different process because obviously, you know, being a, you know, NCAA athlete, um, you can't have an agent, but, and almost every hockey player has somebody they call an advisor and an advisor is just an agent before you turn professional. So, um, you know, I had a little bit of interest after my freshman year and I, I knew, um, you know, going into my sophomore year, if I was going to have another good year, I probably had a chance to turn pro. Um, so I had, uh, an advisor, um, kind of just talking to teams on, on my behalf and, um, near the end of the year, my sophomore year, I knew it was probably, going to turn pro after the year. I really didn't know where, um, but uh, it all kind of, kind of worked out and, um, you know, they did a, a really good job finding me a good, good spot to play. How many teams did you have that contacted you? Uh, got probably around between five and seven, I think. And then when they, I guess when your advisor finds out, I guess, is there financial, um, and obviously finances are a big part of it, but is there more of like almost like a guarantee, like, Hey, we're going to put you right in the AHL or like, Hey, we're going to give you a shot at training camp right away. Is that kind of also go on or is it more just like, you know, here's the fit. Uh, here's where I think you'd fit in better. Um, you know, the money is pretty much all the same. Yeah. I mean, at, at that point too, you're not really, you know, the contracts are, you know, there's a max and a min, um, you know, and there's not too much in between. So you're kind of just looking, I guess, for the, you know, the best opportunity to uh, step in and play right away. Um, and a lot of things go into that, you know, when you're looking at, you know, depth charts or, you know, free agent signings, trades, things like that, um, you know, to see where you're going to get the most opportunity, um, you know, and obviously a team could say one thing and do another thing. And that's just the business side of it. And that, that happens. The organization always has to do what's best for itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, there's, there's a ton to, I guess, look into when it uh, comes to deciding kind of where to go. And a team like the Rangers, I feel like they're really active every year um, in college free agents, and we, they've had a lot of success too. I think your year, I believe, it was Pionk also. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was Pionk your year, right? I Pionk, I think it was Gilmore your year as well. Gilmore, I think, was the year before, but the year that I signed, um, I think it was me, me Pionk, Vinny Letary, and Chris Nell. Yeah, I would say, because I feel like every year there's like three or yeah. four, at least, you know, college uh, guys that come yeah. in. Um, so from, yeah, so, I mean, talk about Neil, I mean, he's kind of really taken off since he yeah. left the Rangers, man. He, he had a huge, yeah, I mean, he's, it, it speaks for itself. I mean, he's in, in, 
incredibly talented and um you know i knew kind of from the first time that i saw him i was like yeah this kid's you know he's as much as he's skilled he thinks the game incredibly well and for being a little bit undersized it doesn't affect him defensively and i really uh couldn't be happy happier for him just cause we've you know kind of stayed in touch over the last couple of years and um you know kind of broken together and uh, to see him having the success that he that he is having is is awesome yeah, I know they got Trub on the deal for him, but uh, he was one of the players that I was really hoping they'd, they'd hold on to, especially because, you know, was it the 2018-19 season when he kind of really came into his own uh, for the Rangers? He was pretty much a top uh, offensive defenseman at the time. He was taking control of the power play, and I know Trub is a very similar, I guess you can say similar player, a little bit more different build, but uh, from an offensive skill point. But uh, yeah, he was definitely a guy I was a little disappointed. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you always have to, you never really can anticipate what the organization is going to do. And, you know, I'm sure they have a purpose for it. And, you know, I'm sure they're probably happy with, you know, the the moves that they made. And um, I think it worked out for, for both sides really well. Yeah. Um, so then you come into Hartford and you came right in out of college into the playoffs. Yeah, right for I, the NHL that year? Or the year that I, I had finished my college season. Um, and then like two days after, you know, our last college game, I was on my way to Hartford um, and they weren't in a playoff spot, that, but they still had about I think like nine or 10 games left in the season. So I went up and I finished the season with them um, just to get a little taste of, you know, what to expect for the next year. And I think that was, that was really beneficial just kind of, I guess, understanding, you know, the, the day-to-day operations and what's expected and what, uh, you know, the pace is like during the game. Um, I think that made a huge difference. What was the change like from a college standpoint? Did you see like a huge jump up in competition as soon as you came in or was it kind of like, okay, I can play this like from game one. Like I can. I yeah. I mean, I, I felt, can. I felt comfortable for uh, the most part. I mean, I think the, the biggest difference when you're looking at the college game versus a pro game is, is the passing is a lot better. Um, you know, which ultimately makes a game a little bit faster. Um, you know, and if you're not in the right position, you know, guys will put a pass through you or, or something like that, but it, it definitely speeds the game up. So I think once I got, you know, a little accustomed to that, then uh, I kind of felt at home. Like I said, I think you had five assists in like nine games in the first part, so it looked like you were yeah, really yeah, it felt good right there. Um, <laughs> uh, so from there, uh, you played in the another thing I've always really been interested in the Traverse City yeah. uh, tournament. So you were part of the Rangers um, prospect team for that. So what goes into? So you guys have a training camp before that, uh, so like a mini camp yeah. before that to get together. Yeah, um, so basically, um, you know, they select a team to take to Traverse City, and we all met, um, you know, in, in White Plains and had, you know, three or four day kind of training camp, and then uh, hopped on a plane, flew to Traverse City, play the tournament, and then you fly back to New York and get right into uh, NHL main camp. It's a solid solid yeah. time there. So by main camp, you're there exhausted. Are you ready yeah, to go Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, <laughs> it's good to get those Traverse City games in because you kind of get back into shape. But then, you know, once you get back, you're, you know, a little tired from like, playing like three games in four days or something uh, with travel. So um, pros and cons to, to each side. So when you were in Traverse City, uh, done a little tiny bit of Googling research on this, um, Brian Leach was apparently there. Was that as a consultant or as a – was that – your year, I think it was your yeah, year. Yeah, I think you were. When I was reading, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he was on the ice with us, but I know he was definitely there. And that was obviously, you know, a really cool experience to, to be around one of the, you know, if not the greatest U.S. born defensemen um, to play the game. That was that was pretty special. Okay, yeah, I would say a guy with your offensive skill set as well. Um, you know, someone like Brian Leach. Obviously, he was a great two way defender, but he was a fantastic offensive uh, defenseman as well. Um, is that someone when you were growing up that you either, you know, idolized or someone that you tried to, you know, take tips from or, you know, look at his game? and try uh, I never years? really, I guess, watched anyone specifically, um, but I had always watched games kind of with my dad and him being a coach. Um, it was easy for him to, I guess, kind of break down the game for me in simpler terms to understand of, you know, when to, you know, make a pass or, or when to do something, um, which ultimately I think helped me a lot understand the game and um you know play with a high higher hockey iq and then in your the first i guess i guess your second season with hartford but your full season there um you had a i mean they had a pretty good um 
prospect line when you guys were there. You had Gorgiev and Net, and then you had Hedl and Anderson were there, and then yeah. I think D'Angelo split some time there, and then Lindgren came in later on the year when he got traded. So out of those guys, I guess we'll start off with Gorgiev. What did you – did you know he was going to be that good of a goalie then um, in the AHL? I think – I feel like over the years he's you've really seen him progress – um, as a goaltender, but I don't know if that's when he hit the NHL and um, he's got better coaching, or if he was also a stud down. I think it's a little bit well. of both. I think I think the biggest thing was for him coming over from Europe, getting adjusted to the NHL size ice because it's a little bit smaller than you know the ice they play on in uh, in Europe, and you know, I think as a goalie probably uh, switches your angles a little bit. Um, but I think once he got comfortable with everything you really saw him start to progress and uh you know become the goalie that he is right now and then while you're there you had uh Hedl and, and Elias Anderson so Elias Anderson obviously you know whatever happened between him and the Rangers you know there's a lot of hope there didn't work out um you know it seemed like he was really disgruntled when you were there did you see any of that kind of I mean, obviously he was younger um there probably wasn't that high of expectation yeah. of him then um but did you see the the first round you know, play. Yeah, that he I mean, I, I see. I saw every day why they took him in the first round. Um, you know, I think that he probably felt a lot of pressure. Um, you know, being such a high pick to be in the NHL right away as an 18 year old, um, which is incredibly hard. Like I, I wasn't even in college until I was 22. Mm-hmm. So you know, I look back at when I was 18, and there was no way one I could have even played in college, let alone the NHL. Um, and I still think that, you know, he's going to end up making it. Um, and I think he'll have a really successful career for a long time. Um, you know, he does a lot of the little things right. And he, uh, he works incredibly hard. Yeah. I think a change of scenery is going to be good for him. I mean, he had spots where he's like, Oh wow, this kid's going to be like, he looks great. And then I think with the Rangers, it kind of shuffled him down to the fourth line, which really, I think restricts a lot of, you know, younger players when, you know, a guy like Vinny Leterrieri, when he came up, I think you play with Vinny too. You know, when he when he plays, you know, when they moved him up to the second or third line, you started seeing some production. You started seeing how good he was. But then they sink him down to the fourth line. You get more of a checking line. You know, it kind of restricts these guys offensively, what they can do, and kind of push them back into their own zone. Um, I think that's also a big issue for what the Rangers have done with for some sure. of the – For uh, sure, and it's tough. I mean, if you're, you know, a top six skilled forward in the American League, you know, if you're not kind of – placed in that role when you get called up it's it's hard for you to do kind of what makes you successful i guess um you know so unless you're kind of put in that role it, it definitely restricts you so then while you were there uh the rangers sent brendan smith down during that season um which was tough because he had a, such a great year the year before they signed him to a, a longer term deal um so what was it like having that veteran just kind of come down and it, it seems like from what i read and read at the time um, yeah. he kind of took it in stride. Um, but I just want to, like, how was, what, what was the locker room like when you guys found out, like, okay, Brendan Smith's coming down and then he kind of walked in, you saw this like NHL veteran yeah. all these years making that kind of money. Like, I mean, he was, he was terrific from day one when he uh, came down and, you know, I can't imagine how hard it was for uh, a player like him and, and the career that he had. Um, to to be sent down, but when he got there, um, you know, it, it, in no means was he acting like he was too good to be there. He came in and immediately tried to help uh, the younger guys and, and tried to mentor, um, and you know, worked just as hard as he would, I'm sure, if he was in New York. Um, so I think that kind of it was it was a good learning experience for the younger guys to, I guess, really understand you know what goes into it and and what you have to do to to be successful. Yeah, I think he's a great example, too. I mean, he worked his way back to the NHL, and he was, a, I mean, I would say one of the better Ranger defensemen towards the end of the year, especially in the playoffs um, this last year. And that Plus, he shows versatility by being a fourth-line yeah. forward for half the year as well, um, which is only for sure. value to the team. So also, while you're down in Hartford, you're yeah. with a guy named Ryan Graves. Uh, I think Ranger fans now look back and say, yeah. why did we do that trade? Um so, <laughs> so this year, uh, this year Ryan had, you know, he led the league in plus minus yeah. plus 40, which I'm sure, you know, I wouldn't mind Rangers having now. Um, 
So when he was down there, yeah. obviously he was an NHL All Star. So what? <laughs> what do you think the Rangers? I did don't really know. That's a good <laughs> question. Um, I think Ryan was a, probably a little frustrated, um, you know, with not getting, I guess, a legitimate, uh, a real legitimate chance um, in New York, uh, kind of after the couple of years that he had had there. Um, but I mean, still at the same time, you know, he was a younger guy. Um, you know, and having that much success, maybe they wanted him to, you know, get, you know, two or three years, four years under his belt before making the jump. Um, you know, and I think Ryan was probably frustrated. And, um, you know, we, I saw really uh, firsthand, I guess, um, how versatile he is because he's got a really heavy shot and uh, uh, and can create offense. But at the same time, you know, he's he's a really big guy plays strong defensively. He's got a really long stick and makes a good breakout pass. Um, so, you know, I, I was, you know, sitting here watching this guy. I'm like, you know, when's he going to get his chance? Yeah, I mean, he got his chance with, uh, unfortunately, Colorado and uh, really made the best of it. I think he got a nice little uh, paycheck, too, for uh, yeah, the season. Yeah, a raise. Um, yeah. yeah, a little bit of a raise. I think no. 3.5 mil. Not, not that bad. <laughs> So while you were down there, Chris Drury was the GM for, I guess, for Hartford, the AGM of the Rangers. Was he involved a lot? Uh, was he in Hartford a lot to, uh, you know, take in practices and games or, like, talk to players? Or is it more of a – he kind of watches from Westchester and, you know, it's kind of – I know. I, like, I'm, I'm almost positive he was at every home game. Um, and I think he was there, you know, most of the time during the week, during practices. Um, you know, we obviously didn't – see him a ton, but you always kind of, you know, you know, when he's at the rink. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, it, yeah, he was, he was definitely around. So then within the Ranger organization, who is pretty much the biggest influence on your game, uh, from a coaching standpoint, or even, you know, uh, I, you know, anyone they brought in to help, um, for like the defenseman. So really good question. You know, I'd probably, I'd probably have to say, um, Kevin Shattenkirk, um, just because we uh, we actually okay. trained together in the summer um, and kind of played a similar style, um, so I mean any ounce of information I could you know could get out of him I would and um, you know the one thing like he he never you know big league dust younger guys or anything like he you know he, he talked to us like you know we had been on the same team for years and I think that speaks a lot about his his character and, and the kind of guy he is. So, um, you know, when he, you know, just won the cup, I, I shot him a message and congratulated him and he got back to me right away. And you know, obviously it's, you know, he just won a Stanley cup. He didn't have to do that, but for him even to, to take the time out of his day to, you know, to reach back out and, um, you know, just a really, really great guy. Yeah. Him and uh, a few of former Rangers down there yeah. won a cup this year, which is nice to see. I know McDonough won his cup, which is, um, you know he's he's a guy who I think uh, the Rangers got rid of also a little too early in his career, but uh, yeah, that's good to see Ryan win too. So NHL training camps, you had uh, two, two training camp. How many training camps do you have for the Rangers? Two. So when you go to camp, um, what's kind of the I guess how do you the daily breakdown? You guys do obviously you can't have I think it's like fifty three yeah. players or fifty players show up the training camp, and you guys break into two separate teams for the Yeah, it's usually or? split between um, two and three groups. Um, so, you know, when one team's on the ice, the other group's working out or the other group's doing film, and then you all just kind of cycle through, and, and that's your day. But you usually have, you know, practice, workout, and video, um, you know, all kind of combined into a couple hours. So it's good, long days, but uh, but definitely good good for you. And I got asked the question, how was it playing in front of Hank? That was, the, uh, yeah, really cool. Really cool. I mean, just to, you know, share the same ice as him, um, you know, definitely a Hall of Famer and uh, a guy who is, you know, it speaks for itself what he's done. Um, you know, that was that was really special. It was crazy just kind of, you know, looking across the locker room at him and seeing him there. And you don't know whether to go say hi or ask for an autograph. <laughs> So they, you know, has always talked about his work ethic, uh, you know, behind the scenes, even his age now, you know, they say like uh, when he's over in Sweden that he just works out nonstop from the, like the end of the season till the start of the season. Did you see any of that, like behind the scenes look of like, man, this guy is 
little crazy. He's just yeah. I mean, I saw like going. we'd get to the rink and he'd be on the ice with his goalie coach, and you know he'd stay out after and ask guys for breakaways, and um, you know it, it, it. There's it's not a surprise the the amount of success that he's had because he puts in you know all the time. And then while you're in training camp, uh, I know you stood yeah. up for a game against the Devils, um, which is yeah. That was at MSG, right? So what was that like going that game day? You know, getting on the Garden Ice and just kind of yeah. I mean, it was it, all it was like a whirlwind, I guess, because I found out I think the day before, um, you know, I was going to play. Um, so I called my parents, and you know, now they're on the first flight to New York, and you know, trying to figure out tickets and whatnot. But, um, you know, I think, I think the most nervous I felt was probably during warmups because you're, you know, you're skating around and it's Madison Square Garden, you know, you're looking over and that's the New Jersey Devils. And, um, but I think once, you know, the puck dropped, it was just a hockey game. Um, you know, I think, you know, you kind of soak it in a little bit and, and, and warmups and, you know, you're like, this is unbelievable. But, uh, you know, I felt like once, the game started, it was, you know, back to business. Did you feel like that game was faster than a normal AHL game or like, was you feel like there was like a um, jump in competition or was it just kind of like, Hey, it's, this is the level. It was, it was definitely a, a little bit quicker than the American league. Um, not much because obviously, you know, both teams didn't dress their full roster for, you know, their NHL, but um, you know, it was definitely probably a little bit quicker than the American league, but it wasn't like, you know, I felt like I was back on my heels by any means. And then kind of back or I guess after the NHL. So you go back to Hartford and unfortunately you get sent down to the, um, to the Mariners, the new Mariners. So what, what was that like for you? I know it was probably obviously tough, you know, going down and playing some games, the ECHL, but the, you know, what was the difference really from, I guess, a, a, a playing standpoint between the eight, you know, the, the H on and yeah, that's so. probably a lot bigger difference than um, the American League to the NHL. I think that's probably you know not as big of a jump, but I think the East Coast League to the American League is is a bigger jump. Um, you know, it wasn't that the it was necessarily slower, but you had a little bit more time to to make plays and and create, and um, you know, it was uh, it was good to kind of you know get your confidence back and. Um, you know, get back into a groove. Now, while you were down there, you know, you hear these stories from guys like, oh, we went down to the coast and we took a seven hour bus ride that broke down. Are there any, uh, any good, <laughs> any good coast stories that happened? While um, down there or not? Nothing really. I mean, I think the toughest stretch we had, we had to play like four games in five days. Um, so that was a little bit tiring. Um, but overall, no, our, our bus managed to stay together the, the whole week. So it was good. <laughs> Um, and then from there, uh, yeah. you went over to Milwaukee. So I've actually gone. I've gone to yeah. a game in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, very cool arena. Um, yeah. You know, I was there for a business trip, and uh, they had a game that night. So I was like, why not go walk down there? Um, yeah. The arena was packed. Yeah. It was like a Tuesday night. They, uh, um, I was really impressed. The cowbells yeah. there that ring constantly all game long. It's a pretty cool yeah, place I mean, to that play. Was, uh, that was – a really fun experience being able to play there. Um, you know, that was a, a really well run organization from, from top to bottom. And, um, you know, they always had, uh, like you said, good attendance and we were treated very well. And um, it was, uh, it was definitely a really cool experience to, you know, and definitely to make the playoffs and, um, you know, have a good shot at, uh, at going far. And um, overall, yeah, it was, uh, it was one of my uh, favorite experiences while I was playing pro. I saw a great quote from, uh, I guess it was one of the Milwaukee writers. They were writing about your arrival, and the guy goes, uh, he's never seen a shot he didn't think we're going to like him. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely kind of had been my niche, and uh, I guess, uh, you know, putting pucks on net and um, easy way to generate offense. Uh, so from there, you went yeah. to Tucson. Uh, and Tucson, I mean, what's the hockey scene? I mean, like it was – it was a huge change, I guess, you know, obviously huge climate change and, um, you know, wearing shorts to the rink and, and whatever. But, uh, I mean, overall, they good attendance and a, a very, you know, solid organization that was also very, you know, run very well. And, 
um, it was definitely a really good experience and uh, yeah, definitely a lot different, obviously playing, uh, playing hockey in 90 degree weather, but um, it was a, it was a nice change from, you know, cold Hartford winters. So. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And then also yeah. Milwaukee too, you know, yeah, that's really, not easy. Really hot. Spot. Definitely. Yeah. So you only played a handful of games down there. What, and then you, you know, called it a career. What led to, uh, to retiring? Cause I mean, you were still, you know, producing in the AHL yeah. level. Um, you know, so why did you decide to, uh, to call it a career? Obviously you've moved on to something pretty great, which we'll talk about next, but, uh, you know, what led to that decision? Um, multiple of things, I guess. I think the, the biggest reason I felt like I, I was realistic with myself and I kind of knew that, um, the way the year was going, um, you know, I felt like my opportunity to, play in the NHL probably had passed and not to say that, you know, I couldn't have uh, made it eventually, um, you know, but I didn't want to be, uh, I guess, a guy that had played, you know, plays 10 years in, you know, the American league and never gets a, a chance to play in the NHL. Um, you know, and I had left school early to, you know, pursue professional hockey and, um, you know, I, I definitely wanted to finish my degree. There was something on my to-do list that you know, I promised my family that I would do, um, and it just kind of made it easier to, I guess, you know, retire and um, start taking classes again full time, and uh, and uh, I guess start your next chapter of life. So did you you went back to Penn State after. So I was actually I was supposed to I was actually supposed to be back there this year, um, and I was going to be a, a volunteer assistant coach, as well as um, taking classes, and then um, obviously with the the pandemic, it made it uh, pretty difficult, I guess, to you know, make that happen. And, um, you know, they're traveling, you know, with a very reduced staff and, um, it, it made more sense to, uh, to stay home in Chicago and, uh, and take my classes online. So would, is that something you'd want to get into later on the coaching side of it or, yeah. uh, well, first off you have this new sports group as well. Um, NXT sports. So, you know, you're balancing that, but it was coaching something you'd want to do. Yeah. So on, I mean, I would say I, you know, um, run NXT sports group. And then I also actually coach, uh, I coach a 15 year team here in Chicago and, um, I really enjoy it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun kind of teaching, uh, the younger side, um, you know, what the game is like and, um, good habits and uh, things like that. Um, so I do really enjoy it. And obviously my dad did it for a long time, still does it. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, obviously open to, to any position or, or anything uh, hockey related. So this new, the new sports group. So when you take, so you're actually, are you a, a you're an agent, right? I guess yep. it's considered. Yeah. Uh, so I do also, you know, we speak, about colleges about being like advisors is that also something you guys yeah. do too so um you know we manage you know we have a couple of professional guys and um a couple of guys uh, in college playing and also playing junior hockey um so i guess we're uh you know my business partner and i both you know played college hockey and played professionally and felt like we have a good i guess understanding of um both sides of it uh when it comes to the business side and as well as uh what it's like for the player um, which I think is a, is unique, and you look at a lot of, I guess, agencies out there, and, and not a ton have you know guys that played for for multiple of years. So it's uh, kind of a good combination of both to to make you know the agent player relationship a little bit better. And since you have obviously some guys in the NHL, and you know this, like you were saying about the college season with this COVID virus, you know, what are um, some takeaways you are thinking about, like you know, for this season, um, for how people are approaching it? You know, they just came out and said. I think January 13th is going to be the angel mm -hmm. start day. Um, you know, what, do you have any insight or anything that you like what players are thinking about? Like, are we going to get the season in? Are we going back to a bubble? Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, aren't really sure what to expect. Um, you know, I think you saw, you know, a lot of guys sign East coast league deals that, you know, probably were deserving of uh, at least, you know, an American league contract, but you know, not a ton of teams are, are even signing those type of contracts right now. So it's, uh, it's been, I guess, difficult and it's been a really tough year to, to start an agency, but, uh, I think we managed to do okay with, with our guys. And, um, but yeah, I mean, nobody, I guess, really knows, knows what to expect. I think, 
um, you know, the NHL will definitely play. Um, I think the American League might look a little bit different than, you know, it uh, it has. But uh, um, I'm confident that uh, the NHL will, will move forward. And then just jumping back to your time with the Rangers, is there anything um, – I guess, is there any, like, you know, some behind-the-scenes story uh, that you can share with us, uh, you know, kind of a funny story or something that happened to you along the way? Oh, boy. Yeah, I know. It's tough. How about pranks? Who's the prank? Who's the prank? A little bit of everybody, but, uh, you know, we had – I won't say his name, but we had a guy – you know, they have a coffee machine in the locker room, right, and there's cups of coffee next to the, the coffee pot or whatever. So we had a guy take a uh, attack and poke holes, really small holes in the bottom of each cup. So every time a guy would go, you know, to, to fill his cup up or take a take a sip, it would spill all over him. So that was that was one of the better ones that I had seen when I was down there. Um, well, thank you so much for yeah. uh, coming on, and uh, you know, best of luck to your, thank you. uh, the new agency. Thank you, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you guys blow up and. Uh, you know, the Rangers maybe be getting a deal out of you. Yeah, I too, hope so. That'd so be pretty neat. But yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on the show, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll check in with you yeah, soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very road. much for having me. Thank you again to Vince Pedri for coming on the show and sitting down with us to discuss his journey through his hockey career, and also we wish him all the best on his new endeavor with the sports agency NXT Sports Group. Well, that does it for episode one of the Broadway Hat Podcast. Please hit the follow button on Spotify to get notified when new episodes come out. Thanks for listening.